you know what? We're floating on a blue ball of dirt. No one really knows what's really going on. I'm gonna do what I want within this existence because I am conscious right now. My mental awareness and who I am and, and what I'm doing to make me feel good and what I wanna do to feel comfortable because at the end of it, I go home and I'm looking in the mirror. And I'm looking at the words never give up, not you. You know, so it, it's, it's, I think it's a combo of everything. It's, you know, I am the human race. So my name is Rich Grossman or Richard Grossman. I was born in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I've always known about good and evil just from when I was a kid and I always chose the latter where I wanted to do bad things and see what would come out of it that would be good. I saw a guy at a local shop in Trevos and he had misery written across his neck in tattoo. When I saw that, like I knew that that was where I was gonna go at some point in life. Now I'm Jewish, so this is not a thing. Later on in life, I saw Gene at another tattoo shop. This guy's name is Gene. I, I, I saw him at a tattoo shop and I told him, I said, you're the guy and this is why, and that's how I learned his name and how I learned about him. And from that point on, it just started with, you know, uh, yard sale tattoos on my back, just horrible decisions. And then I started to get into black work and tribal and it's always been that. I've always wanted to be camouflaged. And um, I just knew that that it made a statement that I, I, I was feeling, I felt it, I felt it. What was your perception? I was 20. I had gotten, I got clean in 97, I wanna say, for the first time for about, I had a seven year period where I got clean and then uh, I relapsed after seven years. But when I was 20, things change when you get clean. And um, there was a guy named Alan, who I believe is dead now, and he was my neighbor, and he got a tattoo and, uh, and I, it was just, I was living on my own, so it was that door where I just wanted to, he offered, I, I, I took him up on the offer and I went and got my first tattoo. So yeah, so when I got clean, everything, sex, um, perspective, accountability, which I think those two things are the most important, all flipped for me in, in a matter of three months, you know, and, and as soon as he said it, it was just like, yeah, take the, take the opportunity to do it. I got, um, on my back, it's the sun and the moon with family, strength, heaven, and change in kanjis. We'll say that's what they say because we don't know what they really say. And then SE for straight edge at the top and then three X's at the bottom. So it's supposed to be this, I guess, symbol of my cycle and my change. And a lot of things happened to get that too. There were dreams that I had when I got clean and. And these all played into it and placated into to me wanting to get this tattoo. How did you go about building tattoos from that point on? I didn't. I just was taking a bag of wet sh and throwing it at a drywall. <laughs> I started thinking about just like anything I could get on my body because I've been I had been conditioned to believe that ink is bad and that you know, if I could write a book, it would be called Jews Don't Do That. At that point in the timeline, it was do this, don't do that, do as I say, don't do this, to you're on your own now. You know, from getting high, from doing drugs, from doing what I already wanted to do and fighting, and just not being present in that fight because I was getting high, to now I'm on my own, I'm making these adult decisions and I'm getting, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do in life, uh, that I could do what I wanted. And now the ball has started rolling and it's just, put, just get it on my body. Just get it on my body so I can get it out of my system. I believe that there are three states of consciousness. There is the here and now, there is the, the subconscious, and then there is the spiritual conscious. And for me, when I get tattooed, because I am tattooed in some pretty painful spots, um, that pain in general, it brings those three together for me, that relaxation is those three states of conscious being coming together and then I can just, I can just relax and breathe. So it, I guess it became more of an evolution or a spiritual journey at that point. Was there a tattoo that just changed everything? Before I did all the, the black work, you know, we all have that, I'll never go on my arms, I'll never do my hands. And it just started creeping out to where I couldn't hide it. And I could always hide my tattoos and then, um, 
I had never give up because of the Dalai Lama and the poem. And that was like the most that you could possibly see other than my arms and my hands, because I had tribal here. I made the jump to the back of my ear and I had a girl that was living in Kensington that said, you go to the other side of the Kensington tracks with that right there. And, and that was it. Once I went on the back of my head, um, behind my ear, uh, me and my artist at the time, we joked around and we were like, that's, that's not the neck, it's the neck and the ear, it's the nerk, you know? And, and so the nerk became a thing. But as soon as I did that, I started to jump into my neck and I started to do bioorganics. And then I went up to my head and then at that point that was, you know, I'll never do my face. And then I started, uh, I do a lot of graffiti, or I used to, and I started putting my logos all over the place. And that's, I mean, once you do that, that's it. That's a wrap. And I'm guessing that just completely changed, like, everything. Um, You'd be real surprised. I think in the time of Gene in the 80s getting misery across your neck in big, bold black letters, yes. I think now my tattoo artist said people are seeing two faces. Uh, before I got the, the chin or you know the, the mass work that's on my face, <clears throat> and he said, I'm going to make it so that people are seeing one face. And I think that once he did that, it changed the dynamic. If you get tattoos on your face and you act like an asshole, you're just an asshole. If you act as if there's something behind it or you have something that, that you have to share or say or that you wanna put out into the open air, people are gonna wanna know about it. And you only get three reactions. You get, or you get, you know, and they're looking around and they can't look at you or, or you get the people that come up to you and they'll ask you, they'll say, are you Maori? What is behind the tattoos? Tell me about, talk to me, like it's fascinating and, and they'll just, they wanna take it all in. So Hood is my, my, my blackout artist. And when I met Hood, I had, you know, I had tried to do everything I could with the tribal, filling it in, doing weird things to it. And, um, and I loved my tattoos. It, it laid out fine on my arms and it wasn't just things off of the wall, it was, you know, artists coming up and we're drawing it out and, and some of it didn't travel correctly, but it was who I was. And, uh, and so we hit it off and, and he did my face, he did my chin. He said, we should just black your arms out. This is a, this is, this is something that when it, you hear it and being who I am, I'm listening to it going, this is sacrifice. This is ultimate sacrifice. I've been wearing this shield for X amount of years and now a man is presenting it to me to give these things up that have made me who I am. And then it was, you're gonna get this kind of black work done. We're just gonna, you're a warrior, we're just gonna do this. And as he would go, I would, we would just bicker. No, I want there to be a line. Screw that line, we're blacking it out. <laughs> and then this is, three or four years ago and it was, well, I wanna do white work, which will never work. It will never work. I, I don't care what you say. So he said, we'll, we'll do lines. You can see the two different colors here. We X'd out the white, he gave me some lines here. And then I just gave him, he said, he keeps saying, you have to give me control. You have to give me control. Just let me do what I'm gonna do. You're gonna appreciate it. And this is the whole two-faced thing and, and people seeing and what they're perceiving me as, as like a gang member or as a warrior. And I still fight, but when I let go, that's when, when things went correctly. Blackout is more addictive than any other tattoo on the planet. A reverie is an inclination that desolate heart fabricates when all else is lost. So a wish is a dream the heart makes when you've lost everything. There's no wishes, it, 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 it literally was me looking in a mirror because we all have bathroom demons that we speak to or bathroom spirits that we, that we talk to. And, and so I looked in the mirror and it was stay or go. It was yes or no, it was evolve or st remain. And by Hood doing that, he probably knows it. Um, he 
brought back something in me at a time in my life where things were so chaotic. That feeling of when I got clean, it's a transition. So it became me sitting in my truck, pissing in a gallon of empty water and it was freezing cold out that February. I was 300 yards from my family's house that 100% basically I'm dead to, uh, alienating everything and, and I'm crying and I'm on my last quarter tank of gas and I just heard a voice very quietly say, have you had enough? And without even thinking, I said yes. And that's when, that was the, the, the exact moment in time that I stopped getting high and doing drugs. And when I looked in the mirror and I said, what are we doing? Uh, it became, stay or go. And that's what I felt was that feeling of, just let it go, let it go. Like you're holding on to these things. And, um, and so I let go, and that's why we ripped all over my face and my body. And yeah, letting go made all the difference. All the difference. So there's no, there's no wishes, there's no dreams, and there's no regrets. This is, this is a forward existence. <laughs> that's it. This is a forward motion. We are not going back. We are moving forward. And you know, my father would say things like. Uh, uh, Period, the end, next sentence, and you know, moving forward, so.